In today's video, I'll discuss uh, rookies that we can watch over the preseason games uh, over the next few weeks. So with these rookies, I've done a fair bit of research into them. It's good. I think it's good to build a, a decent foundation of knowledge so you know a little bit of, about their, uh, their role and capabilities and stuff like that. These can all evolve over the preseason game, so we'll learn a lot, of, learn a lot about them over the next few weeks. But it's very important that you don't get, you don't skimp on your rookies. So, for example, last year, I went Tyler Brockman over Harry Jones. I knew Jones would be better, extra year in the system, better job security. Um, Brockman's uh, waffle Colts numbers were terrible, but I needed the extra six uh, K really badly. And what happened was Brockman. I was dropped, made about 60K, and Harry Jones made about 150, 160K. So, yeah, lost 100K odd there. So, something like that. So, it's very important um, to get those get those decisions right. So, hopefully, this video can give a little bit of a foundation of knowledge, and then we can build on that as we pick our sides uh, post, post the Amy series. So, we'll start off uh, with the Defender Rookies. And, yeah, a few names here. So... Uh, Brody Kemp is a utility. He can play just about anywhere on the ground, but he's training in defense. So I know there's a, they've got a few names uh, back there at Carlton. Uh, they have their rebounders in Williams and Saad. Not sure if uh, McGovern plays back there, but he's playing down there. Plowman, um, Marchbank, I don't think will... Marchbank's not on this list, but sounds like he's in doubt for round one. So I'm not sure if there's a spot for Kemp or not, but having a, a decent preseason, it sounds like. So one to keep on the radar. Um, would I field him? His, his VFL numbers aren't great, but he was coming off an ACL. So definitely one to watch and see how he progresses. So uh, at this stage, probably bench, but need to be proven otherwise over the next few weeks. Uh, Chessa is an outside, outside mid or halfback flanker. I think he's training in the midfield group, but I would have thought that he'd start at halfback. I have no interest in Chester. A lot of injuries and very, very uncontested game. So, yeah, and obviously not Victorian rookie, not great. Would like to avoid as many Victorian rookies as possible as we saw with last year, um, in 2021 rather. But yeah, you, you never know. Some players might be able to overcome missing a lot of footy. So see how that goes. But Chester, not one I'm interested in. Uh, Lekka Lear is a key defender. Uh, mature age, so I think he's around 21. The with the Giants, with being a key position defender, they're going to probably probably play Phil Davis and of course Sam Taylor is there. So is there a can he play third third toll or can they play three key defenders? I don't think so. Um, one to watch. I'm not exactly sure if he can play third toll to be honest, but I imagine from what I've read, he's a straight straight up key position defender. So. Not sure this is there, not sure there is a spot for him, and he was described as a little bit raw when he was drafted. So doesn't fill me with confidence. I think his average was about 65, 67, something like that in, in the sandfall. So one I would probably bench, um, but is a capable interceptor. So yeah, don't think he gets a game, but never know. Uh, Jordan Boyd, his name, his name has popped up. So he's mature, taking the mid-season draft last year. 23 years old, might play a lockdown roll down back. So when I hear lockdown roll down back, that's strictly bench. So apparently he's progressing well. Yeah, and he's 23, which is good. So one to watch over the preseason, but I only heard his name pop up uh, over the last few days. So one to keep an eye on, but you're yeah, not sure if he plays around one. Uh, O'Driscoll, we keep hearing a few more positive things about O'Driscoll. So O'Driscoll is... I think he can play inside and outside, probably more inside, but might have to start his career off playing a bit more outside. Um, he's defender mid, but I haven't heard that he's playing in defense at all. Only only hearing that he's playing a bit of inside and outside at training. So last year he had a few injuries, not great. Um, VFL numbers weren't super great. Oh, waffle numbers weren't super great either. I think they were in the 60s. Um, but yeah, coming from injuries, it is pretty rough. So. Apparently having a full preseason unlike last year. So see if you can build on that. And I think, yeah, there was an article on the Freer website. Someone was saying, you know, he's a, he's a chance for round one, which is good. So with O'Driscoll, I would probably bench him early and then see how he goes. And then depending on his, how he goes in the preseason, but I think potentially a field option, but obviously 
we can only see what numbers he put up last year in the waffle and not super great. So, uh, yeah, keep an eye on him. So one where, look, if he's, if he's named, I'll pick him, put it that way. Sam DeConning. So watch a bit of his highlights. So he can play, he played key forward a fair bit um, in the VFL from what I read. But he's their key position defender, and I think he actually has to play because I'm not sure they have anyone else who can play key position defense to replace Henderson. So watch, yeah, watch his highlights. Looks looks fairly athletic. Um, not a huge ball winner, obviously being key defender. So strictly bench. Wouldn't want him anywhere near the field. But maybe there are intercepting capabilities. I, I'm not exactly sure. And he can rock a pinch hit in the rock. So you don't get points for hitouts, but. If you can get one hit out to advantage every two weeks, I don't know, five points, nothing but better than nothing, I suppose. So, yeah. So um, maybe because his job security seems reasonable, I think, I I would imagine anyway, strictly bench, possibly avoid, sort of in that category. Um, Will Gould heard nothing on him. So Gould can play... From what I've read, re, a rebounding defender or can play key position. Played key position in the preseason last year, scored horrifically, but averaged in the 80s or so in the in the VFL this year. Probably, I assume that's playing a bit more rebounding, that sort of rebounding role. So, um, wouldn't have a clue, to be honest. Have heard nothing on him. So, maybe I, I'd expect him to play in the preseason, but whether he's named round one, wouldn't have a clue. So, probably a no at this stage, just because we haven't heard anything. No news can be bad news. I guess. And Charlie Dean. So it looks like we might get Charlie Dean because uh, Jordan Ruffhead is out for the first at least four weeks of the season, which has been reported. So Will Kelly was the other one. He's playing, he's training in the forward line. So I assume Charlie Dean having an okay preseason, I assume that they will play him in round one. So he's one I would look, while there is a chance he gets dropped in around five or six or whenever, I am happy to pick him because he's 102k, he's a mature body, played a fair bit of VFL, scored okay, I think in the 60s, um, playing key position, so um, has intercepting capabilities. Um, but yeah, one where maybe we get an extra price rise or two because he's so cheap. Um, and yeah, there might be a scarcity of rookies, we don't know yet. So uh, one I am okay with picking, Charlie Dean. So. I'll just quickly scroll through this, see if I've missed anyone. Sin, Vic Drafty, not not too sure. Injury history as well, uh, not too sure. All soft tissue history already, so I don't know if his body can handle AFL just yet. Um, Bodie scored really well in NAB League, but you don't know a whole lot about him. Uh, no, I haven't seen him in any best 22s, so that's pretty much it for the most part. There might be some Richmond, like Gibkus or Tom Brown, but... You're getting Vic Drafter. He's not a huge fan. So out of these guys, I think there's a good chance we get Kemp. Uh, maybe we get Boyd because of a bit of hype around him. Maybe we get O'Driscoll and we should get the Conning and Dean. So say you could probably plan for three at this stage, maybe a fourth one. Uh, the other one I actually forgot is Mitch Hinge. Uh, actually, yeah, he's worth speaking about. He's Where the hell is he? Anyway, so Mitch Hinge is the a 180k Crows player. He was in the round one team in 2021, did his shoulder three times. Uh, I was I was actually watching, I was at the game and I just saw a dude run off with his shoulder like this three times to the bench. So is a little, he has done his shoulder before, before he, when he was at Brisbane, is training on a wing and was training with the A team. So I don't know what his accumulating um, abilities like. I think in the Brisbane in the NEFL, I think his average was, I don't know, about 17 disposals a game. So I'm not really sure what his capabilities are, but he is a bit older. I think he's 22, 23. He's one I would definitely watch, definitely worth watching over the preseason because it might have a decent rollout at, on a wing, potentially halfback as well. So he has a really good foot, uh, really good kick. Um, yeah, pretty lethal foot on him from what I've read. So um, I think we'll get Hinge. I think we'll get DeConning. I think we'll get Dean. And we might get Kemp, Boyd, and O'Driscoll. So that's what I'm thinking at the moment. And yeah, I'm not not picking Chester. So there might be a few names here that we get. But at least we'll get the Conning and Dean, pretty sure. So move on to the midfield. Um, Horn Francis, I th- think 
I think we have to temper our expectations a little bit because he's not exactly a high accumulator. At times he was, but over the course of the season he wasn't. I think his average was in the 70s in the sandfall. Look, I'm happy to lock him in. Good job security, high ceiling. He can have those boom games in the midfield, I'd imagine, from what we saw in the sandfall level. And apparently he was outperforming Simkin and LDU at clearance. So that's enough for me to pick Horn Francis, high ownership. Do you have to pick him? Uh, I don't know. I don't think it's not as must-have as Walsh and Rao back in the day. But he's one who I would want, just the job security as well. And you know he will he will make at least 150K. So yeah, you got to pay up, but that's fine. Finn McRae, see how he progresses over the preseason. So again, one of the big, probably was the best performing mid at AFL level last year from the drafty crop, just about. And he, he didn't probably, he didn't even perform that well. Um, low time on ground, well, low mid time as well, but yeah, you can't expect too much of him. So just that just puts into perspective how poor the draft crop did at AFL level. If McRae was, I don't know, what was his average? About 40 with some sub games. So maybe it would have been 55 for him to be like just about the number one mid from the Vic draft crop. So see how, see how he goes over the preseason. We know that his body shape has changed a lot. And they want to get games into McRae and Reef McGuinness. McInnes. So Reef's not on here at the moment, but we'll be briefly touch on him after. Um, I think we'll, we'll get it out of the way now. So Reef, I think, is playing a bit forward at training, but uh, is impressing them. So they want Nick Maxwell said they want to get games into Finn McRae and Reef McInnes, two to watch over the preseason. The other Collingwood one is Dacos. So probably the only Vic draftee that I'm willing to put in my team is a bit older than all the other draftees. Trained with Collingwood for over a year now as well. So he's a bit more well-prepared than everyone else. But yeah, I'm not expecting Rao or Walsh first-year numbers from Dacos. Um, yeah, he has missed, still missed a fair bit of footy. So, um, but yeah, impressing over the preseason. Um, yeah, that, that's pretty much all I can say. So I think I'm happy to lock him in. Uh, Josh Ward... Uh, NAB league numbers were only 108 average compared to Dacos's, I can't remember, would have been 130s, I think. Well, that was for Dream Team anyway. I think it might have been higher for Supercoach. So Ward, not super excited about Ward. A lot of, lot of Hawthorne midfielders that they want to get through there. They got, you know, Mitchell, Warpool. I think Newcomb sounds like he's a lock to play. Uh, O'Meara plus Connor McDonald here. Connor Nash, I don't know if he plays or not. So they've got quite a few names and probably missing some as well that they want to rotate through the midfield. So look, maybe he gets games early. I'm not sure he's a lock for round one, but um, yeah, he will play. Just just a matter of when and how much mid-time he gets. But apparently impressing at training. So, uh, But Connor McDonald did outperform him in the latest intra club. So yeah, not one I'm really interested in, to be honest. Uh, Dylan Stevens, I've locked in for now. Just needs to show that he's capable at the level, but got a huge endorsement from Horse Longmire. Apparently training really hard. Um, yeah, just really impressed him. And I think his average was in the 100s on a wing at VFL level. And obviously, Jordan Dawson has left. The, the opportunity for him to take that spot is right open, uh, wide open for him. So hopefully he can take that spot. But yeah, I'll happily pick him and just make sure he's performs okay at AFL level. One thing to note is in the preseason games, generally these outside players and halfbacks, the game's a bit more uncontested, so it is a bit easier to score. So we saw that last year with you know Jordan Clark and all the all the defenders and halfbacks scored 130, short went 170, stuff like that. So just something to note. Now Erasmus, I think Erasmus does play round one. Did have some injuries last year, but did did get to play a few games, which was good. And scored really, really well. I think it was a 160 average in Colts. So massive contested ball winner. Big accumulator as well. I think he fits the bill as one you can start potentially on your field. Um, on the bench as well, but is a bit a bit much to pay up. What's his midfield time look like? Uh, what's his time on ground look like in um, in the Amy series? Something we'll have to keep an eye on. So I'm, I'm open to picking Erasmus. I'd take him over Ward, to be honest. But could could be wrong on that one. We'll need to reassess that after watching them in preseason. And Hobbs, from what I from what I've read, Hobbs can't play 
outside of a stoppage and they have, the Bombers have a lot of plays that they need to play at stoppage. Uh, Dylan Shield has a bit of quad tightness at the moment, so I assume he gets up for, uh, for round one. But maybe Hobbs plays round one, or he'll definitely play this year. It's just when he plays. So probably start him off on the bench. He's a Vic draftee, but um, I think his numbers were quite good at Nablick level. I think it was something like 150 for Supercoach, something like that. Uh, but yes, yeah, stoppage, stoppage specialist is Hobbs. So potentially for a bench spot, uh, but we'll see. Uh, Cooper Stevens is... A second, he's in, Cooper Stevens is in his third year, had injuries the past two years, but was a first round pick and is a really strong contested ball winner. He definitely fits the profile of someone that I would put on my field. It's just, how is he going to go? Um, having a full preseason, but how how is he going to go um, at AFL level? So not really sure. He needs to prove himself. So fits the bill, just need to see it. So one, I think he'll play round one. He'll be pretty close if he's not. Um, but I've, from what I, yeah, I think he's a good chance. Uh, Jack Carroll, I don't know if he plays, but seems like he might be okay playing on a wing for Carlton. Looks like he's put a lot of size on this preseason, so one to keep an eye on. But not sure he plays round one, but at some stage, pretty sure he will. Spoke about McDonald before. Better NAB league numbers than Ward. And out, outperformed him at the latest intra club. So maybe a bench spot, but again, Vic drafty. So a little bit sus on that. Um, Greg Clark... Not sure he's a lock to play round one. Sounds like Connor West is ahead of him. So Connor West, 250k forward, uh, taken in the mid-season draft. So look, Clark put up huge numbers in the waffle. So I think he won the MVP in the grand final. Scored a 180 or something ridiculous like that. So look, if he plays, chuck it, I'd definitely chuck him on the field. But I don't know if he does. So I thought he was a lock, but maybe I'm not too sure. So with um, Redden out round one, it, it, I assume there might be a spot there. So we'll see if he gets named round one, but yeah, definitely picking him. So out of these, I'll pick Horn Francis, Dacos, most likely Dylan Stevens, Cooper Stevens as well, and then Greg Clark if he plays. So those are the five. I think I'd be happy to fight, field all five. Um, maybe wait and see on Stevens, but yeah. Uh, Cooper Stevens rather, but we'll see. See if I've missed anyone as well. Go through the list. Uh, Constable. I haven't really heard anything on him. Roberts. I haven't heard anything on, but might be a capable scorer. Scored well in the SNFL. Sorry, scored well under 18s, but played out of position at SNFL. Reef should play at some stage. Haley, I don't think, plays. Goda might play for North, but... Endurance issues plus a Vic draftee, I think. So it's probably more likely a no. Robbie McComb, probably be uh, Robbie McNeil. Was it Nick, Robbie McNeil? Something McNeil. From, McNeil from last year, probably similar scenario. He's a midfielder, but probably has to play forward. So, so yeah, hopefully we get a few here and might have to end up with like Erasmus on the bench, depending on who we actually get. So I think the midfield rookies are looking okay. Yeah, Cooper Stevens would be nice if we get him, and definitely Greg Clark would be huge for us. So in the ruck, I got Bruce, Max Lynch, and Cobbin. Also Sam Hayes. I don't think Sam Hayes plays round one, to be honest. I don't know if he can play. He He's behind Lysette. I know that for sure. But can they play both? They didn't last year, so I'm not too sure. Although they did play. They must have played um, Laddams with with Lysette, so maybe they can. I, I don't know what Hayes' forward capabilities are like, but definitely preferred number one ruck. So Proust, no interest in Proust. Um, I don't think this is the time to complain about the Proust pick, but I think it's terrible. And you only have to listen to our podcast and we try and explain why. One of the, there's about 10 different things that can go wrong with picking this sort of player at R2. Don't recommend it. And if you're saying like, it's two trades to get out of it, uh, that's two trades behind everybody else. So that's that's your overall, I would say that's your overall uh, gone that's my view anyway so um not gonna worry about him uh, he will speak a bit more in depth on him in the podcast even i don't really want to speak about him but probably have to anyway so max max lynch so ned reeves played number one ruck in the latest intro from from memory so that doesn't bode too well isn't a great haven't seen huge scoring ability from him either 
at AFL level or state level. So, um, yeah, not not overly confident in Lynch. And then Charlie Combin, I think he plays. Probably the re- – so he's a key forward. Don't think he'll ruck. Um, but, yeah, probably the reason why North passed on Logan McDonald was because they had Combin on the list. So he's had a whole lot of injury issues, and I don't think he scores very well but is actually getting a decent preseason this year and he's never really had one. So definitely not a field option, but if there's nobody else at R3, I'll, I'll pick him at R3 and hopefully he can make a bit of money. And worst case, give us a 45 if we need him to cover for a week or something. So yeah, not yeah, not a super great pick, but um, I guess nobody else, it's okay. So the forward line... Um, so Charlie Kerno, I've locked him in very cheap, has the potential to have a huge game and is having a full preseason, has had so many injuries the past few years, but before that was able to play 18 plus games for a few times and averaged in the seventies. I think he's expendable if you're looking for cash, but at the same time, uh, perfect job security, star player. Um, we can, we've seen how talented he is. And yeah, he's shown before he can score 150. So that all he has to do is, I don't know, score 110, kick three goals, three or four goals, which he's capable of doing. Been a standout in training, does that once. He could make almost 200K for us. So um, yeah, durability is a risk, but I'm giving, given he's having a full preseason, which Bruce is not having, for example, I'm happy to pick Charlie Kuno. So Willie Rioli I have here. So... With Rioli, his last seven games before being banned for doing weed, or not doing weed, it was um, using the avoiding the drug test because he did weed. So his last seven games before he got busted, he averaged ninety two. So it would have been pushing up the ground a bit more. It was uh, there is an article on the West? I could only read the preview of it because it's um, ad, it's uh, restricted. Whatever you, you need to pay for it. He might pinch it in the midfield. So maybe you could get a 65 average from him or something. Not expecting 92 like he did in the last seven games, but maybe you could get a 60, 70 average. I think there's a good chance you could get 150K out of him. But he's, and his job security is good, but he's missed a whole lot of footy. It's a little bit unknown and he's probably going to be a lot more forward. So a little bit expensive and not really, really sure if he's worth paying up for. But. Yeah, absolute things go terribly wrong and we can't pick anyone. I guess you could pick Rioli, but uh, not really one I'm considering too heavily. Uh, Will Kelly playing forward, a bit like Combin, just really terrible durability. So don't know if he plays round one either. So maybe, uh, probably not one I want to pick to be honest, but see how he goes in the preseason. So Hollands, if he's named, you pick him. You might be able to field him. So, yeah, Hollands is a midfielder who can play forward. Probably plays forward a bit more at the start of his career, uh, playing off the half-forward flank. So, yeah, very excited to see him play. Super talent, could have been pick one uh, last in the 2020 draft. So, big fan of Hollands. I, I don't know 100% sure if you filled him just because he's coming off the ACL, but did have a 27 disposal game in, the, in his last game in the VFL. So, when you look at his VFL numbers, they won't be that great. But that's because he was, I think he was first two games or something like that. He only played half a game, something like that. So, so yeah, I haven't heard much of his preseason, which is a little worrying because uh, we really need him. So maybe you can start him on the bench if we can and then go from there. So Sam Skinner could have been defender, but yeah, apparently took 41 intercept marks, something like that in five to seven games. Can't remember the can't remember the number exactly, but with Skinner, I I think I could field him. Is a key position player that can intercept. There is a small sample size, but I think Port do need this type of player. They were exposed for height. We saw in the in the prelim against Port, um, Norton was just flying for everything, and there was nothing they could do about it. So uh, I th- think you could maybe field him, field or bench. So if he's named, hundred percent will pick him of the intercepting capabilities but given he would be a key position defender he might take a few intercepts score 90 he might do nothing and score 40 um yeah not not too sure so definitely pick him if named uh, Rochelle i have here 
not really one I'm super interested in, but having a good preseason and pressing and needs to improve his fitness base and probably going to play forward for a bottom six team. Hopefully the Crows can do better, but um, not too sure. They're, they are rebuilding the Crows, so you never know. Rosie did really good in his draft year. No one really expected in his first year in AFL level in terms of scoring out Port, but no one really expected that. Port were a bit better than Crows, though, so... Um, no, I haven't considered Rochelle at all, to be honest, but uh, see how he goes in the preseason. He does it, definitely knows how to find the goals, and I think his VFL numbers were okay. I think it was like three goals a game, something like that, So or NAB League games, rather. So one to watch. Charlie Park has been impressing off halfback for the Dogs. I wouldn't have a clue if there's a spot for him. We know they have Daniel Dure. Um, Bailey Dale back there so I don't don't really know how they fit him in so hopefully we he plays somehow we saw Scott and McNeil play last year for the Dogs so I don't know maybe he's a chance but having a good preseason so if he's named definitely pick him otherwise yeah can't pick him but it would be nice and Francis Evans playing I think he's half forward someone was nice enough to leave a comment on one of my YouTube videos of the Geelong preview I did and apparently Evans is having a great preseason. One of the standouts um, that Joel Selwood mentioned a few weeks ago. And with Myers out, there might be a spot for him. So would play off half forward, can push up the ground a bit. Didn't score well when playing when played last year, but nonetheless uh, has had a few years in the system. So one way I'm happy to watch him and probably strictly a bench option at this stage. Um, in terms of anybody else, I'm just have a quick sus. Finn McGuinness. A lot of Hawthorne players when interviewed are saying, oh, Finn McGuinness is doing pretty well, but in intra-clubs, uh, haven't really heard a whole... It's more been about Ward and McDonald over Finn McGuinness that I'm hearing about, so not overly encouraging. Uh, Will Brody's injured, and I don't know if he's best 22 or not. It's hard to get a read on him, but we know that yeah, it's uh, he looked like a bust at Gold Coast, so he could be fool's gold. Uh, Motlop, I wouldn't pick... Um, in his first year and just doesn't have the scoring power I'm not sure he plays round one Eli Smith played in the in the A team for Brisbane but that was without at training but that was without um, what's his name too much information to draw on in the in the brain so I can't remember Lions and somebody else was out Dev Robertson was out so don't think he plays round one Pedler has been from what I've read not the greatest preseason compared to Sam Berry's having Sam Berry's definitely ahead of him at the moment so disappointing has had a lot of injuries though and that's about it I think Kane Baldwin sounds like he might play round one because Harry Jones is injured but yeah not expecting great things from him strictly a bench option and Paddy McCartan probably the last one playing key position defense I don't know if he plays round one um his VFL, VFL numbers, one, he scored under 10, so he must have been injured that game. And I think he had a really lengthy suspension as well. So he scored okay in the hundreds. I assume that was playing key position, key position defense. So uh, see how he goes in the preseason. And if he's named, could potentially be one, probably start him on the bench to start off with. The other one is Jack Hayes, who's a ruck forward, for, who will get signed for St. Kilda, it seems. Think he can play anywhere on the ground um, probably more likely forward um, but can go through the midfield but put up huge numbers in the SNFL so uh, probably start him on field if he's named um, fingers crossed he is so that's my rookies to watch again with these rookies it's it's still early we're going to learn a bit more about them but I feel it is important to have a foundation of knowledge if I did a bit more research last year into a few of my rookies such as Tyler Brockman I don't think I remembered I don't think I looked at his numbers closely closely enough in the Colts League. Uh, maybe if I did that little bit of extra research, I would have had an extra 80K to play with uh, picking a different rookie. So, yeah. Uh, anyway, that's I'm not sure how long this video went. It feels like it went pretty long. But, yeah, thanks for watching, and hopefully this helps. And, yeah, can't wait to see them all in the preseason.